we now know enough to think about a circuit, a very basic circuit. And let's even give it a definition. Why not? Circuit needs a definition too. How about current flows around a loop? There you go. Anytime current flows around a loop, we'll say that's a circuit. If I were going to draw a circuit in the real world, in a little cartoon world I live in as a physicist, I would draw something like this. Here's a battery. It's got a positive and a negative terminal. That's where the battery does its electrochemical work to make current flow from one side to the other. Now it's probably got some wires on it. And I would want those wires to eventually go to something. The circuit has to do something interesting. So this would be something with resistance. Because something exciting needs to happen. And then, oh, but we have to go in a loop. The current has to make it back around, so I'd probably bring that wire back to there. So we got a battery. We got something with resistance. What about the wires? We've got to think about the wires a little bit. These are very conductive metal wires. Okay. So in terms of currents and voltages and resistances, you ignore them. The current just flows through here. There's no, you pretend there's no resistance, there's no voltage drop, there's no electric field. You pretend they're just ideal little wires. Because pretty much they are compared to this. This has some big resistance. These have essentially no resistance compared to that. So those are just sort of conduits. Think of them as ideal conduits. That's how I would draw a circuit. And if I were trying to make the circuit for an iPhone, this kind of a drawing would get messy pretty fast. So of course, Engineers have real ways to draw circuits with circuit symbols and uh, circuit elements, everything. So let's draw this circuit with circuit elements. Well, first you need a battery. So that is the symbol for a battery. Two lines, one line longer than the other. The longer line is positive, the shorter line is negative. And I think it's meant to represent the uh, plates in an electrochemical cell. And sometimes you can get more than two. You can stack up those plates to get more potential difference. So there's your battery. The wires you draw pretty much the same, just a thin line means a wire, means no resistance, no uh, voltage drop, no field. But you don't draw them all curvy and crazy. You, know, you draw them kind of nice and square like this. And then you come down and your resistor is a squiggly line like that. Not squiggly, but it's actually a zigzag line. So this is the resistor. This is the thing with resistance. We've also learned about another circuit element, a capacitor. But you got to be careful, it looks like a battery, except that the two plates are the same size. Because a capacitor is a parallel plate capacitor. So this is a capacitor. In these two circuits, the same thing happens. Current flows from the positive back to the negative. Same thing over here. Current is going to flow this way through the resistor and then back to the negative side over there. Okay. So if you, in this class, in this online class, we're not going to do labs and detailed circuits, but I imagine that many of you will eventually do detailed circuits if you take a class uh, on, a, on a campus or some other online class with a lab component. So if you do, you're eventually going to have to make circuits on a breadboard. So this is the breadboard that would be in the lab. It is a, just a big box with holes in it and electrical connections. So I think conceptually it's not that hard to go from this loop circuit to this loop circuit. But then when you go to this, this is more difficult. So let's have a look at it. Even though we're not doing a lab for this course, I want you to see how it works, give you some idea. So it's a big thing with holes. First, the power supply. So we don't really use batteries when we make, well, when we, when we design circuits, we use a power supply that's hooked up to the building power. And that gives you your potential difference. So here, this one, you maybe you can see the little ground symbol. You think of that as zero volts. And then this is at uh, plus 15 and minus 15 and five volts. So you could use these two as your first two wires to get zero volts and 15 volts. And then you take a resistor. So here's a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor. And um, you would then have the 15 volt wire come into a hole and you'd put this thing in a hole next to it and then you would put this end in yet another hole 
and then you take the wire from the ground and put it in yet another hole. And if you hook it up right, it's actually not that different from the drawing on the board. Okay? So current is going to flow out of the high, uh, V high, and go through this wire. And if it's hooked up right, go through the resistor. And if it's hooked up right, go into the black wire and then back down to ground. So it is still a loop. When you get into complicated circuits, it may not be set up to be a nice pretty loop. It may be a big mess. So the key to being able to do this is understanding the holes. Okay? So here is a small breadboard. On this one, it's the same pattern. It's always little spaces of five lateral holes, and then you've got a big long line of holes on the side. So these little uh, five groups of five are all connected. So if you want to hook two things up, you put them next to each other in a row of five. The long ones down the side are actually connected all the way down, and those tend to be for power or for ground. So if you're a visual learner, what I'm going to do is take this apart so you can see the connections in the back. Okay, so let me just take this thing off of its plate real quick. And one more. And I did it already ahead of time and peeled off some of this paper. And now you can see those little groups of five, they are connected. This metal plate is what's connecting those five holes. And if you look down the side, sure enough, it's not just connected five at a time. This whole strip down the side is all connected together. So you could put your plus five volts there and put your ground there. And then when you want to connect to things, you do it in the small groups of five holes. For example, if you wanted to hook up this little uh, operational amplifier, these little just circuit chips like this, you shove them in the holes like that. And now you've got independent access to all these leads and access to all these leads by hooking into their groups of five row there. So that's just to give you an idea. So now the first time you see this thing, there's no need to panic. You're just using the holes to hook things together. And in principle, it is the same as our current loop, our circuit loops.